welcome to a Buy Round Podcast special. I'm James Graham, and in this 10-part series, I'll discuss the biggest, most talked about topics around our great game. Rugby League Roundtable. Joining me, leading journalist Danny Wildler. So I thought, oh, that's a bit odd that the boss of the game hadn't heard about it. Current South Sydney Rabbitohs coach Jason Demetriou. A powerful try. Former Premiership winning CEO Shane Richardson. You've got to make some really unpopular decisions. And Cronulla Sharks captain Dale Finucane. And the Sharks are off and running. Today we touch on arguably the number one issue for fans across the game. Player movement. Rugby League Roundtable. For me, this next topic of player movement, the uh, the transfer system, it's the number one issue in the game when you speak to fans. Uh, I understand their level of frustration of, on occasion, seeing their star player representing their team, knowing they're going to be moving to another club in 12 months' time, play a full season with a club. Um, it's something that is unique to rugby league. I lived in uh, the bubble of being a player and I supported this system that we currently have uh, that has changed. Now I'm out that bubble and in a different role and see the game differently. Uh, Dale, I'll come to you. I, what are your thoughts on, on where it's at and would, would there be any opposition to change? I like the current system how it is. I just like how the players have the freedom to negotiate the timeframes of their contracts. Um, you know, if I look at it myself, for example, and I were to move to New Zealand or to Townsville or somewhere that's foreign territory to me and I had a very short time frame to do it and I had to, you know, look at kids' schools, areas I'm going to live, like those sorts of things that don't impact rugby league as such, they're going to be, you know, I, I just feel like you need the time to be able to do that. And in terms of talking about, you know, the fans and not wanting to see players move on a year in advance, you know, from my point of view, I see – the players wanting to leave a legacy at the club that they've they've been at and they want to re win a premiership and they want to have, you know, a lasting image of them at the club as opposed to the fans think, oh, they're thinking about moving to South Sydney or that whatever team they're moving to, thinking that they've got their eye on that. Well, for me as a player, and I would say for 99% of the players, they want to leave a lasting impression and a legacy at the club that they're at. So I understand the fans' frustration about moving on, but... In terms of the psyche and the mentality of the player, like they want to finish on a good note. The well, they're at. I, I get that, and even they, they could still have that if they elected to say, if we had a system similar to the AFL or the NFL, and you elected to go to free agency, like you could still look at it and go, well, I want to leave a lasting impression on this club, but I'm going to free agency, and we'll see what happens. And look, I, Dale, I've been there. I get that where you're like, well, if I'm going to move to X, Y, or Z or a different part of the country, or even a different country. I want as much time as possible. Currently speaking, some players don't get that. Mm. And is that something that you have to accept as a professional athlete? You may need to move. And you're not asking the impossible. To, if you go from from Canberra to Townsville, or vice versa, or New Zealand, like you I'll will be able to get into your children into daycare. Mm. And perhaps that's one of the just a, a, an issue an athlete has to accept? Well, it certainly is possible, but to your question, my preference is that the current system yeah. that we do have. I know that there but, is discussion around potentially going into a draft system and those things like that, but I like at the moment where the players have the power to be able to go, oh, well, I'd like to stay where I am or I'd like to move here or I don't want to go there, mm. so I'm going to – you know, I just like that they've got the, the power to make those decisions mm. and the time frames – to be able to do it because yeah. obviously there's a draft period where that is all going to occur. You know what I mean? So I, I like that we've got... Or a free agency, a trading window, a transfer window where it would all happen post-season. And I think as well, like, the, the the benefits wouldn't just be, okay, you alleviate the the fact that you get to, you, you're you watching your star players play for your club knowing they're going to go somewhere else, but, but also in this 24 hour news cycle, we're battling for space on the sporting stage, on the news arena. Like that that brings around the whole conversation. It keeps people engaged. It's like, oh, hang on. It's free agency time. It's transfer window time. It's draft time. Like it 
keeps the, the mm. fan engaged in rugby league. It yeah. keeps the stories pumping. Now I know as a player, that's just yeah, like, well, well whatever, the, I don't the, care. The, the I want to look after myself. Yeah, if like, I'm going to Townsville, I want to yeah. know I'm going. Well, the question is then, who are you looking to appease? Are you looking to appease the public who don't want to see you leave a year in advance and the, the excitement of that draft period or the player? And I don't have the answer. Like, And then obviously the players, the freedom to, to choose and have the time that they want to do. So it's it's a juggling act of are you appeasing the public or are you appeasing the, the ability of the player to choose what they want to do? Yeah, look, again, I stress this. As a player, I, I wanted this current system and I couldn't see the wood for the trees. Mm. Um, but, I, but I think for generally for the, greatest, for the greater good of the game and the sport, we would be better moving to a model not too dissimilar to the so AFL. So how do you think that would look? So you'd say at the end of... Pre-season or the start, just pro, sorry, at the end of a season, that would when you would be looked to have the draft system and players who are off the off contracts. Draft. No, it's not. It's not. It's not a draft. It's a transfer. It, it oh, would be window, um, like yeah, transfer yeah. window. So, so if, what I, if time I, if, frame would you have on a transfer window? Would you say? Well, I would say that what would happen is that you would go to the end of the footballing season, which is around about October, and then maybe. The, the second weekend of October, that's when the trade window kicks in. Mm -hmm. And then to start at the new club in on November the first. Yeah. And you might elect to you might elect to stay. Now I know there's gonna there's there's very logistic. few players are starting on November first. Yeah, <laughs> but but your contract with the new club course, starts yeah. on November the first. Yeah. Now obviously there's the, the, there's issues that would need to be to, to be looked at, but it's I don't think it's asking the impossible. That if you if so say if I was playing and my contract ended in season 2024 October 31st right that if I'm going to elect to go to free agency as a player so I don't sign with the club that I'm currently at I'm going to go to free agency in that trade window I then get to speak to other clubs and then I move the season 2024 finishes I go into that into that uh, agency free agency period and I get picked up by another team like some, you, you know, teams would talk as well, but I think at the moment, so say if I were electing to leave rather than currently November, the one ticks over, I sign with the rival club, but I can't go until the end of the season. I, I think it should be, and I know there's things around like injury protection, but, but players, they, they look at it from the negative. Well, what happens if I get injured? Well, what happens if you're not playing? What happens if you're out of form? What happens if you go into, what happens if I sign now, but then I have the season of my life? I'm undervalued. So there's pros and cons from a player point of view. It's not all completely negative. Would you allow conversations prior to that to occur between other clubs? So let's say between player and South Sydney prior to that, say November date, November one date. Am I allowed to have conversations with I would, JD? About I, would going say, to I would say no. So it's I would all say happening no. in that little but in that you, period. You, look, we all know people talk, mm. and we, we we'd, we'd all know that that mm. would happen, but we wouldn't. Well, technically not allowed, yeah, you would say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As I said, because we have the current system that we have, and it's all I've known, and and it's in the players' favour. Obviously, I'm going to stick with that <laughs> because it gives us it the freedom. It is massively because weighted. Because it gives in, us the it freedom. Is massively weighted. In, in. Well, who's not going to like it if you're yeah. a player? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Well, if, he summed if, up their players' favour. And, and yeah. it's, I love the honesty in it because yeah. it, mm. it is. It is. Yeah. It is a system that's set up in the players' favour. And I've, man, I've been there as a player, I've been there as a coach, and if the decision to keep it as it is is because it makes it easier for players to move, then that, in my opinion, is ridiculous. And take it from someone who's moved states, mm. countries, multiple, multiple times, it's not that hard. No, it's not. It's it's. It's a bit daunting. Mm. It's a bit of a pain in the backside, Anxiety, and your kids don't like it yeah. at first. Yeah. But I can tell you from somebody who's got three kids that have lived in, have gone to probably six different primary schools and high schools, who are just the most resilient kids and can move around and meet people and socialise. It's just the benefits far outweigh the negatives. So it's do it's doable, right? You're it, not it, you're it, not asking people to do something that can't be done. It, it's not only a possibility; it is. A fact that it is doable. You can do it. It's and, not and, what achievable. What system do you like, JD? Would you like to see it go down this system or just leave it at the current system? Like, what's your opinion on signing players a year in advance or having someone sign elsewhere that is at your club? I just think what if, you, if, you, if you want to extend your players, then there's an opportunity to do that prior to the window. But yeah. if you want to go, the club decides we're not going to keep this player and you're going to move on, then there has to be with you to... to for players to sign 
and then stay at a club for twelve months. It just there's too much. And and though you've got you've had a great career and you're well well liked and well respected for for the integrity that you've played the game in. And there's no doubt in my mind that if you were to sign and move on and twelve months in advance, there's nothing that's going to stop you giving eighty minutes of your best effort every single week. But that's not the case for everyone. That's not the case. And then sometimes it's used as, okay, once the door's out, now I'll start manoeuvring. So little stories break here, break here, break there. And Try it's and just give them a season early. And then eventually they'll let me go because that's what I'll and, and it takes that out, out away. It takes that this oh, I want I'll, I'll I'm not happy, I want to move. No, well, okay, there's a window at the end of the season, you mm. can go into that. But to counter that, you you look at a guy like like two years ago, Vili Army Kikau. He I think he had possibly his best season when he knew he was leaving club this year Stephen Crichton I don't think I've seen him play better football mm. than even though he knew his, so players can perform and can do it if, no if, doubt. if it's in their heart no and doubt. in their like you mentioned integrity mm. if they you know that that's part of them so it can be done for, for me the the biggest thing that the players probably can would reason they like and you touched on it a little bit it's not so much for me if I want the players to move and it's the security that you have that in in advance so that because anything can happen in that mm. season and if you pick up a major injury and all of a sudden your value drops and you're going into the market off the back of having a broken leg or well, well that actually happened surgery. it happens to Cameron McInnes who's a close friend and of mine and, and I understand he, that. he signed at the Sharks and then uh, suffered a season ending knee injury and for a player like him he was like well how good is that well I've already signed mm. but I still think he would have got picked up anyway had it mm. been a free agency uh, or what value that's the well, that's the question potentially his yeah. value drops but then mm. You, as a club, you run, you run a risk by undervaluing him. Mm. But but also, what, what happens if Cam, Cam McGinnis plays that year and doesn't get injured and starts playing the most ma magnificent football ever and his value goes up? Mm. So there's pros and cons, whichever way you look at it. W w or he signs at Cronulla on what would be the cheap. Mm. You know, his value could potentially rise in, in that time as well. Mm. And, and that... That that's more to a younger player where you know they haven't quite reached their potential. Mm. So, so so there are there, there are not this isn't wouldn't all be a negative for yeah. for the, for the current player. And I think you know for me it's kind of one of those things that you you sign over as an athlete. Mm -hmm. If you, you know if you speak to people in the NFL that move across state. We watch Moneyball, James. That yeah. movie Moneyball, and you Just, see the guy come to the locker and say, "You're traded." Yeah. In like what? And so pack your bags. You're playing for this other team tomorrow. Yeah. So it, it can happen. It can there happen. There be many professional sports that the player is able to sign that far in advance. Mm. It, uh, it's it, it, is Richard. Is there, is there uh, sorry, um, that does that? JD, for, from my knowledge and observations, it's the only sport that practices this model. Mm. It's rugby league chaos. It's it's, yeah. it's what happens in the sport. Yeah. You know, think think about it. Is that is. Groundhog Day. I mean, this has been going on discussions <laughs> for the last 15 years. I, I was part of the three-man committee that did the CBA with the great Steve Norris, Aust Doust and myself, under David <laughs> Gallup. And, 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 and the reason, it came down to two simple factors. First of all, the players made the decision they wanted that time. This was all about the players. One of the few things in those days the players ever won on mm. was this one. But they won for a reason, because it was a farce having a date that wasn't there. There's no way in the world that you will be able to stop clubs from talking to people before this date, as it is with the AFL. Yeah. So it was a farce where people were meeting, telegraph was to, Danny Weigel was out hanging up over coffee in the morning, all these things. Because it, it just, it, you talk about coaches being cheats, there was no bigger cheat than, than clubs. So at the end of the day, that, that, that was the two reasons behind it. My opinion is, as it was then, as I agree that we should have two transfer windows, yeah. not one. We should have one in the period you're talking about, mm. and the second one at the th at, in June of the year. Because as it is now, you can change clubs now by the 30th of June under the mm. registration. I'd wipe out the 30th of June and have a transfer window then, so you couldn't change clubs until then. So you'd be you'd, you'd be able to pick up your players here, but if you wanted yeah. to change people in the middle of the season, you could change. Yeah, them like a two there. week window because it has become a bit ridiculous from the late it's movement ridiculous. for and it's for usually players. the club trying to offload for a salary cap point of view. Yeah, well, that, or, or, this is where it becomes a like even a couple of years ago, David Nofaluma leaves, goes uh, on loan to uh, Melbourne Storm with what, what, about what, the, what four about weeks the, to go. What about the hooker? 
It was a star player for West Tigers. Uh, goes back to, uh, I, I think goes they, back to what's it like? Yeah, the, well, they cheered him off the field in the last game. Well, I, the, w- <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about the loan system a, a little bit later on. But w- with, with these transfer windows, I think you know. Again, I think I think there's a level of frustration for the fans that there is a solution because it happens in other sports. Again, it's a, it's this we're rugby league. We're we're, we're proud that we're different, but. I, I like the mid-year one as well, which I yeah. said. I think because then then the player gets his future sorted, mm. and he's only got the back end, the second half of the season or the back end of the season to finish off with his current club, and he leaves in good and makes life a lot it's, easier. It's so less room. For yeah. it's, it's a short period of time to back on the point that I was trying to make about having the freedom. Let's say you've got three different clubs that are miles apart. Just the short period of time to go, shit, am I going to Brisbane? Am I going to Townsville? Am I going to New Zealand? Like the time that you want to take, if you're moving for four years, you want to have a well-considered decision Do that you're making. But Dale, I, will, I will say this, Dale, there's no business in the world that gives you 12 months' notice that you're going to be moved on somewhere. So if I'm working for the Westpac Bank and they say you're going to go to Sydney from Brisbane, you're going to Sydney. Yeah. And you're going to, you're going to work out how your parents are going to stay there, how, you, how your kids are going to go. It's, that was my argument. This is, this, this, is, this is not just for players. Everybody has a decision in business whether you get moved or not. And, and that's not taken into consideration, oh, giving you 12 no, months to do it. No, I certainly understand that society has it. I'm just saying because we have but, it at the moment. Oh, but, 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 because we have it. Like, I like, it. Like, and I, don't get me wrong, I completely understand in society people move jobs at the flick of a button sort of thing. And but also, I Dale, appreciate that. You, you're on the upper echelon of, of the players. So you, you might be afforded a lot of time where, so if you're off, especially when you're at the peak of your powers, you're 20, when you were 27, when you were making the decision to leave Melbourne, to come up to the Sharks, you would be sought after. There would be a multitude of clubs coming in for you from November the 1st to say, actually, we need a middle forward. Let's go and get Dale. You would have options and you could weigh up your future and have maybe three months to decide and field different offers and who's going to negotiate. Mm. But most players don't. Most play, most players are in this position of like, well, is the club going to renew me? Yes, no. Oh, no, they're not. It gets to September and then, you know, they're technically unemployed in November and then they will get picked up and they might have to pack their bags. So I think that the... the you Do know, you the, think that the draft system makes that better for them though? Given they've got a short... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. a, tra- a, a trade window. Oh, I, think it, I, think it pretty much, sorry. I think it pretty much stays the same for them. It just... What it does, it puts the star players into that same pool, but it, what it takes away is the fact that those star players are playing for clubs and the fans know that they're not going to be representing The only thing I'll say, though, year. James, is really, though, mate, it doesn't. It sounds very simple. It doesn't work that way because what's going to happen is the Dale Finucane's coming off contract, yeah. okay? There's no way he's not going to be contacted of by... Course. Uh, of course. Uh, which, and but it happens it's, in but, but it's supposed to be illegal. What's, what's, the, lesser of two, what's but, the lesser of two evils? Well, well, I'm just saying that. But the second thing is, you're exactly right. What happens is if Dale Finucane gets to that period and he's Dale Finucane, a player everybody wants, mm. there's no way he's staying at Cronulla. He's, he could have signed with Cronulla and done the business mm, all yeah. before. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah. he goes into there, he knows where he's going mm. because he knows that there's Brisbane and what's around there after him and he's going to do it. Your point's the relevant one, though. There's 95% of players who go into that pool where the club's pissing them off mm. and they've got nowhere to go and they go into this transfer pool where they can decide where they're going at that stage and that doesn't affect them. But I can tell you now the problem we had at the time, and people forget this very quickly, was the fast that it was that this period was coming up and that players weren't talking to player managers or other up to other clubs. It was a farce. And so Contract the player draw, won actually. because the players won because it was the lesser of two evils. We gave that away, but we stopped being criticized for the farce of not policing mm. the negotiation. That's mm. that's it's that's what it is. So you know, I'm a firm believer in the two windows. But that's the reasoning behind. So, it. just on the two windows, you know, the mid-season one would that be immediate transfer? Yes. Or, yeah. So, if a club uh, wanted to make some, ch- yeah, make some changes, that's not. I want to sign in June no, for no, November. So that's that's, that's oh, straight yeah. away go, immediate, go, immediate go, release. You, you go much. into that period there, and then, but the player's got <laughs> the option to go where he wants. Move. What happens <laughs> now is though, what happens now is though, which is unfair to players. The only people that go into that that window where we are now, the people that plug those want. Well, they're offloading it for salary cap. Mm. But if in that period of time, 
they made the decision they wanted to go into that window. Mm. Well, they could be picked up by anybody. Yeah. If from they were an contracted. Out, from an outsider's perspective, right? When I, when I was growing up, what I think is important is that fans still have hope in some way, whether it's a hope for Correct. the next season or hope for the mid yep. That's, to me, like as a, as a kid growing up and if Correct. you're following a struggling team, You'd be, you'd read the paper, or you'd be dying, Correct. you'd run to get the rugby league week and say, "Oh, is there some chance that my club is going to recruit Dale or, mm. or James?" And you'd, and you'd be cheering that on. That, that so if you're a struggling fan who has nothing to look forward to in terms of his team producing on the field, this is a game within the game that they can actually get something from, and it keeps them invested in a lot of ways. And that's why the current system does that. Like, you know, in 12 months' time, Dale's coming to my club. How good is that going to be? Because we're shit now. But he's going to make a difference. But, but I think you'd still get that. Where no, you, I'm where you, we, we get. Yeah. We want hope. Yeah, you'd yeah. want – I think – so say for, yeah. Just, yeah. so, say, for example – 12 months' notice yeah. before he gets to yeah. the yeah. yeah, yeah. So, oh, say, for example, now – With the 10 different schools. The, 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 <laughs> the, 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 the Bulldogs, right? They, they didn't so have a great hope. season. They get Crichton. They got hope. But then imagine going into, like, a, a free agency period mm. or a transfer window. Like – You'd be like, oh, who are we going to get? Mm. Like, well, we're going to go, yeah. yeah. And I, I think it would, for the for the benefit of the game, the product as a whole, I think, okay, ne we're never, never going to get a perfect so solution for this. And it's very difficult to have, especially with a salary cap based sport. Mm. But I just think, I, I personally think we, we need to change change the model. Did you see how hard it was to get that CBA <laughs> over the line? Oh. <laughs> you think they're going to give up the first of November? No. Well, well, you, you, you know, you know, you know, you know what generally, it's not gonna, yeah, but you know what yeah, generally they surprised me. They didn't change. They didn't have chance. Five years it's in for. I know. It, it generally it, it <laughs> actually surprised <laughs> me how they the, the the NRL gave that up. No, because I thought they, they because they know <laughs> historically. Oh, once again, James, you have no idea the hassle that was for clubs oh. and players in that period of time and what a farce it was. And and what I'm saying to you, this is the lesser of two evils. And, and Oh, you think I, the current system is the lesser of two evils? Well, I think what it does, and I think that's why you have the two windows, but I think if you've got to understand that if you go that way, there is still the NRL's got to police it. Mm. And how they police it, you're not going to have people diving in out of windows with cameras. <laughs> Or you know, it's, 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 it, 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 it just becomes it's so it was so untenable that we decided, well, this is the least of our worries in the CBA. Let's give that away, you know, yeah. and, and, and go from there. So I and it's locked in leaked right? emails and yeah, we 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 know it's going to happen. That you know because again, if you're the star player, and this this generally only affects the star player that makes yeah. the decision to come off contract. You know, we, we see a lot of late movement, like the Bulldogs signed four players recently for. Um, for for next season, that 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 got announced like two days ago. Well, we've known about it for well, technically, yeah. but anyway, this this affects the star player, and I guess it would put the extra pressure on them if they don't re-sign. Then people people know they're going, but it, but it only really affects them. I'll give you a funny, quick, funny story how farcical this was. <laughs> so South Sydney before my time with David Tap was the uh, Johnny Tap's son was the CEO. He done all the negotiations behind the scene when you're not to. Mate, signed these four or five players from other clubs and announced it at one minute to 12 instead of after 12. So <laughs> at one minute to 12, the night of the deadline, it's all of a sudden out everywhere that he's, we've signed, they've signed. I mean, it was a complete farce, wasn't it? It was a complete and utter farce and that happened all over the place. So it's a difficult mm -hmm. one, but I don't uh, think you're going to change it. To be honest, I, I, I know the NRL talk about these transfer windows and they want, I think secretly they don't mind that Correct. we have these discussions because... Mm -hmm. It keeps league in the news cycle. Yeah. Well, months of the year. Correct. We're talking. It's better we're talking about a player going to another club than other stories that might oh, dominate headlines. Can you imagine how bad it would be if all the referees were good? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nothing to write about. Hopeless. <laughs> so I don't think they mind that it generates news. And yeah. I know they're talking about changing things, and they're awful. But secretly, they go, oh, it's, not, it's not the worst thing yeah. in the world. No, I, well, well, I, I actually don't think it's a huge problem at the moment. No, I don't. Think I, don't, so I, don't like, I know I'm having a bit of banter about it. It's all in the players' favour, which which it, it is. is. Mm. But I, I don't. I'm not sitting here going, oh, man, we've got we have to change this. This mm. is killing the game. It's not a it's not a huge yeah. problem. I, I, and it's look, well, you, it, you never lost one player <clears throat> at the deadline. That you no, just, not well, one. That, but it puts pressure on you to make decisions and. 
get your in recruitment advance. in order in Correct. advance. You've got to be thinking two, three years mm. in advance. It, it, it makes no you... you did Jai Arrow the night before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, well, it's, yeah, it's, you had a whiteboard in your office, Richard, yeah, you with, with your players. Three years ahead. Yeah. You, this is your play you're going to have this year. This yep. is your play. Mm. And it was, you know, it was all like you like a plan or it was yep. all mapped out. And what you're able to do then too, which we did and we still did do, even though people whinge about it, we could take, tell players 12 months out mm. that they weren't going to be there. Mm. To, to be honest, I think it's harder to keep players engaged when you're telling them we're halfway through the year oh. when they don't have deals. Yeah. Oh, mate, you know I'll, I'll get like back to that's, you. That's mate, when it's hard. You're yeah. on our radar. I'm yeah. going to get back to you. Yeah, don't worry about it, yeah. mate. I, I you got, understand that too. You've got players yeah. you, that bullshit. want to stay yeah. and then you've got to make the decision that they're not staying. It's, it's brave, that, That's cool. difficult. Correct. You know, and that's the players you're talking about, James, mm. that the guys that aren't going to get a deal in November in November 1. Mm. So to that point, is is the longer time period where they've got to make those not more effective? Like if we're talking about having it in this short period of time at the end of the year, but wouldn't we say from November till November is, well, they've got a year to make the decision? Like, is that yeah, more I think they need to have less no, stress. They'd be like, well, no, I'm going to free agency. Or the club would say, look, Correct. We're going to let you go to free agency. But there's also a chance to get nothing there as well. Yeah. Well, Whereas yeah. Like yeah. Year, think, players like you. But I don't yeah, think that would change, would it? Because a no. club could still wait until Correct. the trade window, yeah. but in that time could still make the decision yeah. to say, we, okay, we're going to do You could literally, you could literally the trade the, 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 those mm. conversations could be, look, we've got up until trade window. If you prove it's over to you. Well, but at the moment we can't make an offer and and the player then knows, well, I've got this trade window. Yeah. But look, it's one of those issues that... You know, I think if we had a fan sat at the table, that they, they'd be up in arms and no doubt the, the comments will come back to that. But then I don't really think anybody's got a perfect solution. No. And like Richard says, it's locked in for the next five years. So up until the next CBA, <laughs> it isn't going to get changed. Can we talk about it in five years? We, we'd definitely be talking about it in five <laughs> years. We're talking but, about next week. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's there for. Well, so well, you can talk well, about well, it. You know, bitch. Well, you know what? Where are Somewhere. you going, Luau? What's going on with your life, yeah. Luau? Well, well, Jerome, Jerome, he's, he's such a pain, but you're Jerome not. Luau, Jerome Luau, Luau, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people are going to – he may sign for another club in, in the coming weeks and this whole conversation is going to get brought up time and time again. Uh, he's basically gone to free agency, though, hasn't he? Yeah. In, in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His contract is yeah, still in a way. Much, but yeah. the rest of his career, he said, no, no, I'll go yeah. to free agency. Let's – and that's test what the my, trade test my window does yeah. do. It gives you yeah. an opportunity to find out what else is out yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and, and, and he's got time on his side mm. to do that. That's the yeah. advantage. But to your point as well, like they're going like, to have those conversations anyway. Yeah. As you say. So that's it's right. like, yeah. what's the difference? So well, like, we'll have the 12 it, months, but yeah. talking behind closed doors? Or? Well, even that, you can't tell me that all clubs will wait until one minute past 12 on November the 1st to sort of tend to suggest to Jerome Luai that – they might be interested in him being <laughs> well, the half back. Doing that what might get him. Or, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Around, exactly. yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but yeah. that's where, as a club, as well, you you know that. So you mm. know that. Okay, well, we've got to make it so that he doesn't want to go to November one. Mm. Correct. Yeah. Because he might be having conversations, but signing a contract or getting to the point where he can sign a contract. Colin that's one hundred percent. It's very different. Mm. And it'll be the same in a in a trade window. Like you, you can be having conversations, but all of a sudden you're in this window, and then the conversations that you weren't having all of a sudden might come to fruition. Mm. The other thing that the end of the season does, it gives all the clubs time to have more interest in maybe one or two players that mm. they might not have been thinking of because things mm. change for clubs. Yeah. So they might go, oh, okay, now I'm interested in yeah. you. And that might not have been the case two or three months ago. Mm. So there's pros and cons. Yeah, there's pros and cons. And look, like we say, we're locked in for five years. A couple <laughs> of other issues on the, on the player movement. Um, calls for player salaries to be made public. Dale. Yes or no? No, I'm not a fan. I just think it puts. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, I'm all player favorite. Yeah, right? yeah. What are the players? Yeah. No, I actually agree with you, mate. No. Yeah, like I just think that it puts pressure on both. Like it puts mm. pressure on the higher end players who are on a million, and not so much the uh, the the lower paid guys. But I just think it puts unnecessary pressure. And look, to my point as well, like who are you looking to appease by doing that? It's obviously the public because what benefit outside of the public scrutinising it mm. is it there for? Like it's there for no other reason other than for someone yeah. to comment and go, oh, clear he's on a million bucks, he's playing shit out. It just gives the trolls another reason to have a crack. But yeah. yeah. I, honestly, I think that if we as journos, we would know what a lot of, of players are on and we, we we hear it from certain areas, it's not that big a secret. But, yeah, I wouldn't want my own salary put out there. So, mm. Correct. You know, it, it, that's the it puts a lot of pressure on the, the top end, mm. huge amounts of pressure. It does. You know, and in, in an age where we're signing players on potential, which is 
way the system works at times now. You've got to take some calculated risks and play players. They're the ones who are going to pressure. They're they're the ones who are going to get stuck, getting judged. I use um, Ash Taylor as uh, as a great example, and he was signed for a million dollars at the Gold Coast. And and there was no way he was a million-dollar player yet. But they seen potential in him. But as soon as he signed that million dollar price tag, and everybody knew about it, but it maybe was, it wasn't a million dollars. Maybe it was like eight fifty, and the media just ran with that. Roundabout, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and then it doesn't, be, then it yeah. doesn't become as that. It's like, hang yeah, on, he's not a million. He's actually well, eight, which is still big money. It's still Great big money, <laughs> but yeah. there's still there's still that perception that he needs to be delivering now because he's his marketing why player. Why do you need to tell the players wages? What's yeah. the reasoning? What is the reasoning? I'll tell you what the reasoning is because if people are out there sitting there going, oh, they're cheating the salary cap, how does that tell you what the salary cap Because it is in the salary cap. If they were cheating the salary cap on the figures that are going to be exposed from a contract, That's you, don't, you, yeah. you don't cheat the salary cap from the figures that are exposed on a contract because it's under control. That's yeah, not where the contracts. cheating goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> so he's, he's on more so million a year. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's nothing. B, he's yeah. got BB next to his name. Yeah. Brown, Brown I think, why, I think why, pe- why people might Ridiculous. want it is because it's, uh, you know, there's always the Roosters sombrero that people yeah, but, go on about. Yeah. But I think it, it doesn't change it, anything no, like but that. They, yeah. they, the they, they show con- transparency what people are yeah. earning, which it's just not. I, I mean, talking I about the rabbit has been here. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. From a spectator's point of view, I can see how it's you know advantageous for them as well because take the Storm in their prime again when they had Billy, Cam Cooper, probably, I don't know, but probably on a million each, you know what I mean? And then you look at that way that the money was spent and the other type of calibre of players that they had and you look at, you know, how successful they are. So you might say, oh, well, that's the best way to do it. So as a coach, you might go, let's get a $3 million spine and then let's just get a bunch of workers. Mm. Or you might mm. go, let's get, you know, the Panthers who they've got an Isaiah Yo, a Fisher Harris and a Luai and an Edwards sort of thing. You, and then you go, oh, well, that's probably the best way mm. to spend our money. Like that could shape the way that you build a team, I guess. And from a spectator point of view, that's how they might see that as it important. Is, I, I think as well it would be a, a nightmare for clubs. And players oh. jealousy. Oh, oh yeah, no yeah, yeah, no doubt. And there'd be someone on two hundred. He's on four hundred. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He managed to be on the phone. He made twenty chaos. Look at the tackles. Forget the big stuff. The bloke said, "He got two fit. How come I got two twenty five? They, they, they argue over drink bottles. I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> they're not going to. It's, it's just, it's, it's not. The, it's the ones like the, sorry, it's not right. Like, like the finders who, who have signed with the Tigers. Their young kids have been given big contracts. And that puts a lot of pressure it does. on mm. them to perform, doesn't it? That, that's where I feel sorry for players who get their salaries exposed. The big guys, they have to handle it. But we all know that the biggest players on a certain amount, within within a hundred thousand or so, you know. That but but generally, as a, as a, the, as you, and this is why I'm a big fan of having minimum wage for players mm. of a certain age, because mm. when when you when you Go through the grades, and you and you're starting to progress, and you're starting to play more first grade. Then you might get some rep footy, and then you're starting to play internationals. Your your mental resilience and your understanding of your role grows with it, and then the expectation of what's on you has already grown. So now you start earning this kind of money. You're not like going all of a sudden. There's expect no. You've earned. You've built that expectation mm-hmm. on your own performance anyway. But when you're a kid who's paid on potential, it's a huge amount of pressure you that mean, goes you on the maximum kid. Maximum wage on a kid. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I do, ah, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I don't. I, I don't think a certain amount of sure. games played you can earn above a certain amount. That's and right. I know that might be a restriction of trade for young players, but I, I see it as protection of young players. I think you could be onto part something there. Mm. It was part mm. of the development. I think. Yeah. I think exactly it, it really does protect young players. And then when you get to a certain point, you know, and that's up for discussion with coaches and, and, and administrators. That okay, now the players are are able but, to. Earn but then would we have to accept the fact that let's take. Um, Joseph Suali, he, who mm. comes in as a teenager, like R- Roosters battled with uh, Rugby Australia. Mm. If they that battled with us first, yeah. Battle, yeah. yeah, because of the ridiculous amount of money that he could earn but, yeah. a, as a Harold Matthews player. Mm. Mm. Correct. He That's had exactly not only played yeah. Harold Matthews when he signed a deal to go to play for someone else. He'd never played any yeah. other level. And that's a huge amount of money. Yeah. And how much pressure has been on Joseph since he's come into first grade? Huge, uh, huge, a, a lot. And that comes that comes with the territory of the money being the, well, a money, a superstar, good looking mm. young athlete. But mm. then, say if Rugby Australia come in, if we have a cap on what we can spend on a 
less than 50 game player or less than two seasons or whatever it may be. They've got a cap. We can't. They've got a cap now. You got to, 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 to the rugby Australia rugby contracts is one of the reasons we're picking up so many rugby players, is because they're they're based on number of games they play at each level. So you you, you might set a very small base, but you might be able to build it off. You play X number of Waratahs, you play for Australia, etc. So there's a small base. There is no there's nobody that we can't compete with in rugby union on a player. Mm. So Wiley was just out of this world what happened on Sawali. And the problem you've got is when you give that money to Sawali, who's a great player, don't get me wrong. Yeah, 100 grand. But when you give that money, what about all the other kids in Harold Matthews that you're paying $1,000 and 1500 and giving them boots? And they're doing this. That's my point before about it's not just one person that makes a team. Mm. It's more, far more than but that. But then that's and, up to the, that particular club. That's but, how they manage that, their camp. Yeah, I am agreeing with you, but yeah, I'm agreeing with him. Yeah. You can't do that and put your system so far out of whack that mm. you got you, that you're going to affect the whole of your salary cap. But that's what club players. club some clubs would roll like days and mm. all the rest of like, like in the Caelan Ponga situation, like Newcastle have rebuilt a large way on him. Was he, he had he played a lot of first no grade when he left Townsville and they no. made a huge offer, didn't they, for him? That they that was their their hope. And how yeah. much how how many years of consistent yeah. high level footy has Caelan played? Mm. Since since he yeah. he's starting to come get real comfortable mm. now. But it's what is he? Twenty five, twenty six. Yeah. He's Look. starting to get real comfortable with that tag. Mm. It's taken a long time for him, and he was he's he's always been an outstanding talent. Mm. My point is, can we create a system that lets him grow a little bit first and develops the resilience and the understanding of and the appreciation for what he can potentially earn through what he's earned, well, what you, he's done. On you the know field. what that'd bring as as well. JD is more youngsters uh, staying at their at their. The club that they Definitely were developed correct. at. That's yeah. so th that that would be that would be a, that would be another benefit of that system mm -hmm. is the fact that if I'm coming through, like a like a say Caelan Ponga at, at um, the Cowboys, mm. we see this huge potential. Newcastle made a play on potential at the time that's mm. paid dividends. That was the correct call. But like maybe a guy like Ash Taylor, he was signed to the Gold Coast. Big dollars on potential. It didn't venture it the same way mm. as what it did for Caelan Ponga. But that would stop that. Um, it, it, well, it would completely stop that happening and help those young lads stay at the at the, the club that they were developed at. And then the competitive advantage then comes from how well clubs develop their youth. Yes, correct. And how they know, I need to stay here because this is how I'm going to get mm. to become the player I want to become mm. rather well, that, than just jumping yeah. straight away. And don't get me wrong, I get it. I get there's money to be earned. It's a short career and all that sort of stuff. But if it's a level playing field for every young player yeah, in your, in your debut season, that's the maximum you can earn. It lets him go out and play footy. It lets him go out not, not stressing about income and earnings and all that sort of stuff. We're going to take a quick break from this podcast to talk to you about AG1. Now, this is a product I've been taking for over a year now, and I absolutely love it. It gives me all of my daily nutritional needs in one easy drink. All you have to do is put in one scoop of AG1 into a nice cold glass of water, and you are set for the rest of the day. The cupboard has been cleaned out of tablets and powders because all my needs are met by AG1. The power of routine cannot be underestimated. And we all know how small habits lead to big wins. Some of those big wins for me have included better gut health. My clarity, especially in the afternoon, has improved so much. Gone as the mid-afternoon slump. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement. Now, as humans, we all share that same basic foundational needs. That's where AG1 take care of everything. This supports your body's needs like nutrient replenishment, gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. AG1 is the supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. And that's why they've been a partner and I've been a user for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1, a buy round exclusive. If you try AG1, you get a free one year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. That's drinkag1.com forward slash buy round for our exclusive Australia wide offer. Check it out. You, you didn't like Harry Grant leaving the Melbourne Storm, going playing for the Tigers. That would on loan, season long loan. It's something that I actually, um, one of the many or a couple of things from uh, Super League that I thought 
adds to the competition. I think that the loan system is a is a positive one. Yeah, but mate, the reason uh, I've ran the clubs in England for three years, so I know what you're talking mm. about the loan system. But the pr- thing about the loan system is that they haven't got enough players. So what you've got in a lot of clubs there that they loan them out to give them experience and mm. loan them out, for, but also they haven't got the number of players we've got. If you're running an effective club, you've got 30 top grade players, you've got six development players, and you've got all these other players that are coming through your Ball, Flegg, Matthews, completely different to England, which hasn't got mm-hmm. anywhere near, what not even a tenth of the depth that we've got. No. My point about that is why in the world, if you're making a business decision about the team you've put together, why do you need to take a lone player in rather than to develop the player you've got as hooker underneath Harry Grant to oh, come so, through? So your criticism is of the West Tigers for bringing that player Correct. in as opposed to the benefits Correct. Now, they brought him in for a reason. They wanted to get success. They wanted to win games. I'd bring Harry Green in tomorrow, by the way. But my point of it is that's not the that's not the ethos of the club. That's not where you're going for the future. That's not where you're, so, yeah. And that's not what you're trying to build. And all they got was a sugar hit because they didn't actually improve the next year, the year up. They went backwards. My point about it is, though, your only way you develop is internally, and we've got enough players within our clubs to be able to do that. I can't imagine you bringing in a lone player to take over with Mama Zula sitting there underneath him because no you chance, think that this yeah. Harry Grant's a better player than Mama Zula's. And West Tigers would have had players in their system that they could have brought up, but they chose to go out and get a lone player. So you think that's poor on the f- – it's not Melbourne Storm. It's it's the, the, the Tigers for saying. Melbourne Storm. Yeah. Because they, they well, it's great, great for the player as well. If you're, you know, in that particular instance where Harry Grant's stuck behind um, Cameron Smith, who's got one more year to go, it's within his interest and at the moment Melbourne Storm's interest to go and play. Because I think originally he was going to go to Super League. But yeah, he may have done. But see, that gets back to a lack of confidence in the feeder system. They've got two great clubs that they feed into now. Three, which is a joke in itself, but two great clubs they feed into: Sunshine Coast and Eastern Brisbane. Now, they've got quality coaches. Some of them come through the Melbourne system. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Harry Grant sitting there. Playing. Like the fullback is going to become another superstar. He's been sitting there for two years <laughs> running around at the Sunshine Coast. Pappen, not Pappenhausen, um, um, yeah, Pappenhausen playing up there as well. My point about it is they've got the players in their system. Once you block that off or they see that you're not really treating the way you should be in the progression you've told their parents is going to be, they turn off and they tell their mates and they tell their mates, I'm not going to let this happen to me. And to me, that's what's wrong when you don't allow a ability to bring up. Now, he might come up and he's not quite ready, he's all, but he's never going to be ready unless he plays. Playing Harry Grant was a great sugar coat. The fans loved it. and Pat, It didn't help him make the finals and it certainly didn't help him the next year and the years after. We don't need to use like the England loses loans because they haven't got the players. Mate. But perhaps what it what it could do is showcase to a player like Harry Grant that the Tigers are on the up, and you know who knows in the future that might be a law to bring him back because he's made connections. At yeah, that I club. agree. I think it gives him exposure and allows him to play at a level. But I think we talk about growth of the game. One of the biggest areas where we fall down is losing players around that seventeen to nineteen to twenty one year old. Correct. Mm- my theory is that we invest more in our state leagues. I know right. there's talk of a national league, but I don't think we need that. Oh, I think we need a strong Queensland Cup and a strong New South Wales Cup. But make that a strong competition that feeds into one final system where your best team, your best four in Queensland play your best four in New South Wales and form a top eight system that has a genuine grand final and grand final day that plays on free-to-air TV one game from each on, on the weekend and gives that exposure to encourage kid, more kids to stay in the game for longer. I think that that is probably – and we, we don't need a loan system because we have that much that much talent. In mm. in the UK you do. You, in Super League you do because playing reserve grade or set the second tier is a massive drop-off and it's not as good as playing footy as championship. Mm. So, <sighs> it's, yeah, I, I mean I've coached at both New South Wales and Queensland. I'd love to see a national reserve grade but not in the sense of a, every NRL team has their own – and, and we get rid of the rest of them because I think Queensland's strong on its own. Well, you're gonna do, if you do that, the only thing you've got with that is you're going to destroy the pathways because yep. you're taking players away from Mackay, Townsville, Toowoomba, uh, you know, all over, my, the plan that we, part of the, the great Richo plan that uh, got flung out the door but it's coming back is, is that, you know, my thing was to change things, to do things in New South Wales mm-hmm. like they were doing in Queensland. For example, if they had adopted it, you know, South might have their feeder team in in uh, in uh, Tamworth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, to, like they do with to try and grow the game in those areas and having you know South players, Benji Marshall because he's in reserve grade at South playing in Tamworth for Tamworth. Mm-hmm. Th- those things bring people, and you're actually giving something back to the people, increasing the gates. And like, 
it's a game of that we've got to encompass everybody into it because we've got a wonderful system underneath, but we can't cut it off. And having your own reserve grade team, like, let's be honest, how in the world is, 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 is the Gold Coast, for example? So the Brisbane, Gold Coast, uh, Brisbane lose Norths. They, what do they do? They don't go to Ipswich and to Woomba, which is dying on the vine, last in the competition. So, well, they go down to Burley. Why? Because Burley's got all the money. Like it's in the play. How does that grow the game? Doesn't. Yeah. It's so at the end of the day that we should. What, what are we doing to support Ipswich? What are we doing to support Toowoomba? Now, Redcliffe is supporting Rock Epton. As you know, Central Queensland was last on the ladder for years and years. Now, all of a sudden, they played in the semi final this year because they had those players. It makes a huge difference the way those pathways work. We've got plenty of players. I made the point before in Queensland, there's 38% of all participants come from Queensland, and there's only 16% that play in the NRL. Can you imagine on grand final day a, a genuine national second tier competition oh. playing as a as a as the game as a pre-game to the NRL? Yep. Or the pre-game to the NRLW. Yep. Instead of having a game where two teams are playing each other, been on the drink for a week. Yeah. You well, know, like, it, it, the <laughs> interest <laughs> in that second tier because solid <laughs> you get you get the Queensland versus New South Wales mm. sort of interest in it through the final series. Yep. You know you have. Uh, back up um, pre-games to your NRL yep. final series. Yep. I just think it generates even more interest Spot across on. the game rather than just at NRL level. Mm. It perhaps I, I makes the game a bit more of an event yeah, as, as, as well. Yeah. And also it's not just that. As a players, you're actually coaching coaches. Look at Jay. Yeah, JD, definitely. come through the yeah. system, coached in Cairns, coached in Illawarra, come, Paul Green, coached at Winnemar. There's so many examples of mm. that, that, that. That it's such a great competition to learn your, learn your skills as for a player and a coach. So I, I'm not really a fan of the loan system. Oh, no loan system. All right, Dale, you got something to say um, before we go around and uh, finish oh, this one Oh, just on the loan system. Like, I don't have a strong opinion either way of for or against, but just in terms of Harry's situation, like I think it suited him to a T because he did have Cameron Smith in front of him and, you know, really gave him an opportunity to – you know, make his case for when Cam left because obviously he had Brandon Smith there as well competing for the position. Um, not a strong opinion, but I, I did like it in that case. Yeah. All right, just on this topic with all the player movement, um, no doubt I know what you're going to say in this. Uh, what would you like to <laughs> keep or change? Oh, keep that one day, in. <laughs> keep it in. Keep it in. JD, anything um, you'd want to see change or, or, or kept in this issue? Uh, in terms of the, what are we talking the, about? The player movement. Yeah, just in the player movement. I, I think unless we, I, I like a trade window, like Richo said, in the, the end of the season, but also mid-season. But it's, we've got to find a system that's, that is better than what we've got, and I think that's going to be hard to do. I, I just want to keep talking about it. I like to just keep oh, no, it's <laughs> great for you. It's a wonderful view. I just want to keep Dale happy. That's the most important. I might affect me. I'll be <laughs> in five yeah, years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you'll be in my seat no, going, no, it's disgraceful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a two trade window and a draft man. So, <laughs> all right. Isn't it interesting how your perspective changes when oh. you finish, though? Because you, you, again, you're in that bubble and you have to be a selfish mate. to play at the level you play at. But you do. Mate, yeah. and, and as, mate, well, um, you know, we all change. We all yeah. change our opinion. And obviously, uh, when you're a player, you, you can't see the wood for the trees mm. sometimes. And I tell you, you think, well, how could we possibly change? Change, cha any change, like, invokes feelings of anxiety. Yeah, and that yeah. would just be like, oh, God. Wow, I wouldn't get I wouldn't get twelve months to move to town tomorrow. Oh, I've got to go. Whoa, yeah. Oh no! But what I laugh like about is if you be carrying all of that, the only person who's going to be put out is your wife. Yeah, because yeah, she's yeah, going to yeah. do all the moves yeah. to all the organisation. That's yeah. what I'm advocating for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had, I've had uh, many <laughs> difficult conversations where I've yeah. gone home and said, oh, "We're moving in a month." Mm. Yeah. Well, it, it happened to me moving to St Helens. We just moved in. Been looking for a house for like two years finally got in there it's the forever home we're never moving are we it's like no nah, no nah, this is it and then about four months later it was like do you mind if we go to st helens for six months it's like oh for god's sake <laughs> like we've just moved in it's like, well we're going anyway that's a great way to wrap things up thanks so much everybody that was a great conversation i don't know quite where we got on the player movement we uh, agreed to disagree we every system is bad but great conversation okay well what about that for a fantastic episode of the rugby league not so round table as I've been calling it. Uh, we couldn't have a fan 
on the table. But that doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you. We love engaging with our viewers and our fans. So we've got some questions from last time's round. All thanks to Tui's. The Tui's mailbag. How do you feel? I feel like a Tui's or two. Now, this is all on expansion. So let's have a look at some of the questions, some of the best. Thank you for everybody that submitted. Shame we can't get to them all. But here's Bill Mitchell on Instagram. The PNG bid seems rushed and forced due to the government backing. I think the way forward is to start nationally, maybe with Perth, and at the same time put in pathways in the Pacifica and PNG before we expand. Nobody wants to see a team that comes into the league and fails. We want to we want the game to go forward and grow. Uh, well, I agree with you. Nobody wants to see that. Um, look, I, I can't imagine the NRL rushing this. Um, you know, we hear Shane Richardson speak about a plan. I imagine there is perhaps a, a plan behind closed doors and, and multiple reasons um, why this PNG bid, if it goes ahead, um, is going to be fast-tracked. Um, I think I, I trust the game's leaders in Abdo and Volandis to have the game's greater good long-term strategic growth at the forefront of their decision. Um, so I think that's probably the the reason as to as to why this is uh, getting a lot of traction and, and seems to be um, the, the favourite. But that's not to say, obviously, after hearing Shane speak so passionately about the, you know, a, a third Brisbane team or, or you know, an, another Queensland-based team, you know, I think that there's definitely room for that. Um can they go to Perth as well? Mm, pathways. Look, the, the pathways in the Pacifica and PNG are vitally important. Um, like vitally. Well, I think it's such an undertapped resource. So I agree with you on most points there, Mitchell. I think if we were to go to 18 teams I, I and there's only one new team come in, as much as we've seen a lot of interest and growth in Perth, I I reckon it'd be hard to see them getting the next spot. Um, Gary on Instagram. All we need to do is look at the Toronto Wolfpack debacle, stick to Australia or even a second New Zealand team. Yeah, look, I mean, I don't know if the Toronto Wolfpack is a um, is a great example. There are some elements that you would look at and go, well, why do we... You know, why would we um, expand to another nation? But there was a very different um, set of circumstances with COVID that, that ruined any chance of the Wolfpack succeeding. It was transatlantic. And there was no Canadian-based players. I thought they had um, some great ideas and, and a lot of potential. But just because that failed doesn't mean another move into another country here in the NRL wouldn't. I think if we look at... Uh, sports across the world, you know, that transatlantic team uh, between the UK and and uh, North America, it wouldn't surprise me to see a, a team based out of London enter the NFL or, you know, a franchise reloca relocate to there. But but I think because it didn't work with the Wolfpack, it nearly did, um, doesn't mean to say that it wouldn't work with PNG. And, you know, the, the game's governing bodies would and the decision makers would ov obviously look at other expansions in other sports and see where it's worked, how it hasn't tried and um, forecast some of the potential issues that, you know, they would have. But I don't think just because the Wolfpack didn't work wouldn't mean that uh, bringing in another country or uh, another team based out of another country wouldn't work either. So uh, sorry for that, Gary. But I do appreciate you um, asking that question. And it is a, a good question as well. Uh <clears throat> Witty reference, I like that name, on YouTube. If we get 20 teams, maybe we could see a 19-round season. Every team plays each other once to leave more room for rep footy. Witty reference, I like your thinking. I agree, that would be great. Um, and it makes sense. It would make the league more even. Kind of like the, uh, the Dally M. There's a system in play to spit out the best player. Will we have a system of round fixtures that spit out the, the best team finishing first. The best team doesn't always finish first because we don't play each other twice. Um, the league table does tell lies, unfortunately. Uh, but I like what you're thinking there, which you reference. Um, Asman on YouTube. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, love the show. Here's my question. 
Is this the Rugby League round table or the Shane Richardson table? As man. I know Shane uh, was very vocal in the previous episode. Uh, it was around expansion. And that's his area of expertise. So I have no problem with Shane's input. Um, I've read a few of the comments as well about Dale being uh, excluded from the chat up until around about the 15-minute mark. Well, I was trying to press him on play. But no, look, in, in all seriousness, that was Shane's area of expertise. And um, yeah, he... Rightfully so. I uh, had more to say on the issue because it's something that he is probably more aware of. That's why it's called the Rugby League Roundtable. It's difficult at times to get all five engrossed, ingrained in the conversation. Uh, but I was more than happy with uh, Shane's contribution. And no, it wasn't the Shane Richardson table. It was the Rugby League Not So Roundtable. But thank you, Asman. All right. Thanks again, everybody that contributed with their questions. Uh, please keep them coming in. We do genuinely love to hear from our fans and our listeners, what type of questions you ask. And it's not about having people that agree with, I like to be challenged. There was a couple there that I agreed with for some that I didn't. And that's fine. That's great. That's what we do on this show. We debate in a healthy and respectful manner. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the latest edition of the Buy Around. And that section is all thanks to Tui's. Tui's Mailbag. How do you feel? I feel like a Tui's or two.